Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today is May 7th, um, 2021. I think today is Wednesday if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It's May 5th. It's not May 7th. Why did Google tell me May, wait, May 7th? It's May 5th, Wednesday. Um, so my last video I did, well, it was a vlog for Nolan's birthday, but the video before that, I sat and I had, did an update with you guys because I haven't seen you in like a year. Um, and I updated some personal things that were going on in my life. And honestly, I didn't really know that I was going to talk about it yet. I really, I kind of did the video to be honest. And then I was like, you know what? I didn't really talk about this. And it's been something that's been really like on my mind and something I've been thinking about and dealing with for like the last like couple months. Um, so I, when I decided to put that in, it was right before I was getting the results to it. So editing that video, I'm not gonna lie, was like a little bit emotional. But anyway, so I had my appointment yesterday because of COVID and Brad couldn't go with me. So he just kind of met me after to, so I could tell him kind of what happened at that appointment. Um, so I feel like it's so hard for me to just say a lot. I feel like I'm okay until I actually have to say the words. And I've yet to say the words without crying. Um, it's just so surreal honestly and I don't want to sit here and cry I do not want to be that person but um so I went in and he basically said that there's three grades I guess that's how they say it um for precancerous cells so if you don't know if you didn't watch that video I had to get a biopsy on my cervix and um he said there's like grade one which is mild there's grade two which is moderate and then there's grade three which is severe and he basically said like uh, mine is grade three, so it's on the severe end, meaning it's what it's right before turning into cancer. So crazy to say that out loud. So what that means is um, I'm looking at getting a full hysterectomy. So if you guys don't know, I'm a 31. There's a lot of positives to it. I don't want to sit here and like feel sorry for myself. You know, I'm done having kids. Thank God I had my kids when I was young. Um, and I feel so complete. I don't, there's no part of me that wants another child. So I just, I'm grateful for that. But it's just a hard thing to kind of accept and just, you just it's like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm glad we caught it early enough and I feel like there's so many things that could have happened differently. So I feel grateful that I did, I did find this out um, now rather than later because if I if I could would have waited and I didn't know, I mean it could have turned into cancer and that would be a whole different ball game. Um, so basically, what he said is because of COVID, everything is so different. Um, He's, he, he can't give me a set date on when I'm looking at getting this surgery. So he basically said uh, he's going to give me a week or two notice. But because I'm pretty high priority, um, he said he's going to bump me up on the list. So I'm looking at about like next month or beginning of July. So I don't really know when. I feel like that's hard too. It's like you're reading a, your own book and your own story and then there's like this chapter that you're reading and you're like, this doesn't belong in my book. Like this is somebody else's story. That's not a part of my story. That's kind of how I feel. Like it doesn't feel like it's real life. Like it should be happening to someone else and not me. I don't know how to explain it. But obviously it's a little emotional. I don't really know don't really know how I feel. I felt like yesterday, obviously I'm still emotional. Um, I was very emotional yesterday, but I feel like today I'm a little bit more like numb almost. I was just kind of in such shock. I was just like, I can't believe this is actually happening to me. So it is a major surgery. Um, he's removing my uterus, my cervix and my tubes. What I didn't know is that he could keep my ovaries so that I won't be going into menopause, which is one plus. <laughs> so I won't be going into menopause. Tanner, could you stop? Would you stop? Thank you. Okay. You don't need to be, did you see a squirrel or something? 
he this is what he does if you're sitting on the ground he sits on your lap he thinks he's like a lap dog tanner sit sit like this is how he is he just sits on your lap like i fit here um the one good thing is me and brad booked our covid test because obviously getting a major surgery you'll be more high risk so i will feel more comfortable getting that like brad's still working and i'm still in placement i'm hoping tanner go um that i get to finish out my placement everyone's super accommodating i feel like everyone's so understanding and the people i'm working with in my program they're they just they're wonderful so i don't think that'll be an issue i think uh, the way the timing will line up it will it will work out um in a way it's probably the best timing for me because i did apply to another program for the fall which I can get into in another video, like my career plans, and I never really talked about that in my last video. But I did apply, so they did, I did get an email yesterday yesterday saying, I will find out if I'm accepted within the next few weeks, I think. So I'm a little nervous about that because if that falls through, I don't really have a backup plan. Um, but I should be healed and it shouldn't affect me going and returning back to school in the fall. It just sucks because my summer will kind of be ruined because I will be recovering for six weeks and I won't be able to do anything. So it kind of sucks. We just got a pool heater and we just have plans for the summer, but I mean, I, it is what it is. Um, but oh, that's what I was saying. So in my last video, I said I thought I was going to go into menopause if I did have to get this surgery and it's looking like I won't. So all my hormones and everything will stay the same. It's just... I don't know it's such a bizarre thing when you know like you're done having kids but knowing that like the the, the part of you that made your kids like is going to be removed from your body like i'm losing a part of my body i don't know how to explain it it's just a very bizarre thing i know i'm not the only one i do think i'm pretty i think it's on the more rare side for someone my age if you guys if i didn't say this already i can't remember um i'm 31 so to get a like a full hysterectomy at 31 is not very common i don't think um but if anybody whether you're old or young has had an experience similar or a hysterectomy or anything along the lines of something i'm going through like i'd love for you to reach out and i'd love to talk to you about it because i feel like I don't really know too many people have gone through something similar to this it's just a hard thing to talk about and like say how you feel and because I really don't know. I feel like I'm okay, but then there's points where I'm like broken down. Like last night, I just was kind of a mess. So um, the other good thing about the surgery is he said he's going to try to do a laparoscopic um, hysterectomy, which means there's only a few little, um, like, what's it called? Or like little, not incisions, but like holes basically. Tanner, could you stop? Um, so there won't be a big incision. So the healing time is easier. Um, and I should feel back to my normal self sooner. It's just hard. I've never had anything to kind of like stop me from being the mom that I am. So I feel like knowing that I'm gonna be in the hospital for a night and I'm gonna be like, you know, like bedridden for like a week, maybe two, and not holding down the floor like scares the crap out of me. I know I have a great support system, like my family is wonderful. My dog interrupting 500 times, but I do have a great support system. My family is wonderful. It's just, it's hard. It's hard to say, like, just explain my emotions. And then it's hard when, when people don't have the response that you necessarily, not that anyone has, like, the perfect thing to say. But it's just hard. It's hard telling people and their response kind of rubbing you the wrong way. I don't know how to explain it. But anyways, I'm not going to get into that. I just... Wanted to share where I'm at. I feel like I'm actually pretty proud of myself. I didn't cry too much the first time I made this video. I cried quite a bit more. I feel like maybe I'm getting used to saying it or something. I don't know. But um, I think that's all the updates I really have for you in terms of this. I can't think that there, I don't think there's anything else that I wanted to add. It's hard explaining it to the kids and I feel like that's when I really get to your ad because they had all these questions and obviously they see me upset and they see like my family upset and they don't, it's so hard for, for a child to understand. Like I can barely wrap my head around it, let alone worrying about your mom, you know. So I feel like that's been hard, like trying to explain to them.
But anyways, I guess that is it. I am sorry for this kind of like sad return. I never thought, like honestly, when I decided to come back, I was like, this was kind of, it's been a worry of mine for like a while, but I just kept pushing it out. So it wasn't even on my radar when I decided to come back and vlog for Nolan's birthday. Like I was so focused on him that I didn't see that this, this would, it would have kind of unfold this way. I just didn't really see it happening. Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. Like I said, message me on Instagram if you want to chat or you have any words of encouragement or if you want to tell me your story. I love to hear it. And uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe if you want to follow me on this journey. It's going to be a tough one, um, but it's life, I guess. So thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.